Are you ever free from the narcissist? Like not just physically free and not just away from them or out of the house, but are you actually at a place where you're actually free from thinking about the narcissist? Oftentimes you're leaving the relationship, you're out of the relationship and you've been gone for a month, three months, a year, two years, and they still take up free real estate in your mind. They still take up space and you're wondering, does this ever get better? Am I ever to get this person out of my mind? Maybe you're struggling with the aspect of lingering thoughts, memories about the narcissist, making you doubt and question what was actually real. Was it his fault? Was it your fault? What does that look like? What is this actually doing to you on a day-to-day -day basis? Like, where are you at? I want you to think about this for a moment. Because oftentimes you'll be at the place where the rumination kicks in, where you're constantly thinking, like this thought process comes up over and over and over again. And it causes this aspect of like emotional turmoil. Of like, I don't know if everything was actually real. I don't know if he even loved me at all. Did he love me? Was this real? You start to question even your involvement. Did I cause this? He wasn't like this at the beginning. Maybe I'm the one that made him this way. You start to doubt yourself. You start to believe different aspects. And this turmoil causes these memories. And they keep popping up more and more and more. And you're like, I should be out of this. I've never obsessed about this person. I've never obsessed about any ex like I have this way. Why is this one so hard to move on? Maybe because it was a long or maybe because it was a short period of time. You're like, why? It's important to be able to understand the difference between the factual nature of memories and the emotional toll it takes on the healing process when you have a narcissist that's in your life. Oftentimes we want to be able to believe a different reality than what's actually true. We want to believe a different version of what happened because it's hard to be able to put the facts together. It's hard to be able to show, hey, this is what actually happened. But the hard part is when you're stuck in this, when you're stuck in the trauma bond, the rumination, the cognitive dissonance, the intermittent reinforcement, the intrusive thoughts, when you're stuck in this, it affects so much. And until you see a whole picture of how it affects so much, you typically will not be at the place where you're willing to actually make a change for you. Thinking that, oh, maybe it'll just work out. Maybe you'll figure it out. Maybe it'll be okay. So I want you to consider a couple things first and foremost. What is the effect that it has on you? How has it affected you emotionally and physically of thinking about these memories, of having them come back in your life on a day-to-day -day basis? Like, how does it affect how you're actually showing up for yourself? Does it put you in depression? Does it put you in anxiety that stops you moving forward in how you actually move your body? Stretches, working out, how you feel your body, what, you, what food you actually eat. Does it actually change the perspective because of that emotional state? Does it put you in a place where you're constantly getting hit inside with emotional triggers? Things that all of a sudden you see, you understand, or just catch you off guard and you're set into a funk putting yourself in a self-doubt place, questioning your own healing process, making you think maybe I'm not actually healing, maybe I'm not actually growing, maybe it'd be better if I just went back. Maybe this aspect has you stuck in a loop and you've got to the place where your friends and family members have looked at you and they're like, hey, I get it, but I, I don't want to hear about it anymore. Like, are you still stuck on him? Like, you're still stuck on that? It's been two years. Why won't you just move on? You just need to let go of that memory. And as a result, it's starting to put strain between you and the friends and family because they don't get this. They don't understand the pain of you being with a toxic person and how it's actually messed with your head. Maybe you've seen this just being at work or trying to run your business and make decisions and you're like, I don't even know what to do because I'm trying to make a decision and I have this thought come in. I'm hit with this trigger and it makes it so confusing. I'm lost in the fog and it's hard because I'm preoccupied with different memories about a toxic person. How has this impacted you? Leave a comment down below. Let people know how it's impacted you because too many people feel like they're the only ones dealing with this and they're not. How has this impacted you? What could be different if we were able to work past this? Of you obsessing, ruminating, trauma bonding to the narcissist. What if we could work past this? What would be different? Like, how could we actually help shift this moving forward where the memories of your ex-narcissist, the memories hold less power, no longer control you, no longer manipulate you, no longer pop into your mind, and you're left struggling for the rest of the day. Where you're left struggling, try to be able to find your focus, and you're wondering, how do I continue moving forward? What if you could actually be free from that thought? 
of liberation that comes from empowerment of letting go of the past. And not just me saying, hey, just let go, because that does nothing. If you've been with a therapist, or you've been with friends or family that say, just get over it, you need to like move away from those people. Because they're not actually helping you heal, grow, and change because they have no clue what they're talking about. Question day is like, who could you be without that thought? Who could you be without that thought of having to remember the narcissist, of having that thought pop into your head over and over and over? How would you show up different for your kids? How would you show up different for other people? How would you show up different in your work environment? How would you show up different if you didn't have all these memories and intrusive thoughts like pummeling you every single day? I want to be able to talk through some of the principles that will help you move forward and help you understand where you're at and where you need to go. One of the pieces that I want to be able to think of first off is the principle of looking at the past and viewing it better than what it actually was. Now, when you're driving out west in the United States, you see like the Rocky Mountains, you look far away in the distance and it looks like one giant mountain. And as you get closer, as you go through the mountains, as you fly over the mountains, you can start to look down. You can start to see there's a mountain and then there's a valley and then there's another mountain. There's pits and peaks and crags and all different types of things. When you're looking back at the relationship for such a long period of time, you start to think, hey, it wasn't that bad. Like it actually looks like it had a progression. It had like a growth. Like we were getting along okay. It really wasn't that bad. And then we start to take a look at the facts, the actual nuances of the situation. You start to realize, wait a second, I'm only seeing a peak. And from a distance, this peak and the next peak look like they're solid. But in reality, there's giant pits in between. Leaving you distraught, leaving you confused, and leaving you frustrated when those moments seem so great. But you realize you're only holding on to the good moments not on the actual reality of the truth of the situation. So part of what we need to focus on is looking at the past through a accurate lens, through a factual lens of what actually happened, what was demonstrated, what was shown on a day-to-day basis. Some of this comes down to identifying the core beliefs that you need to release. Okay, releasing the memories that you held on to because you're holding on to the positive ones and ignoring the negative ones, the pits in between. And understanding that you can actually heal in this process, understanding it's possible. And when you start to understand that you break down that version of reality, that idea, that story that you're telling yourself, it opens up the possibility and your capacity to be able to heal in that one area. And then we do this in another area. We do this in another area. And all of a sudden, your capacity for healing greatly increases because you're now seeing the truth of the situation. This all comes to an aspect of a mindset shift. We normally talk about this in the aspect of rewiring your mindset. Like when we shift from rumination to practicing mindfulness and compassion, we have to be able to change the story that you believe that tells you a different version. Because otherwise you'll think, I deserve the rumination. I deserve the trauma. I deserve the abuse. When in reality, you never did. But until we change that thought process, you will always go back to what feels normal. You won't go back to practicing self-care. You won't go back to self-love because you don't believe you deserve it, because you don't believe that it's possible, because you're not sure what that even looks like. So we need to help you construct and build a new reality that actually is based on truth and on facts, not the narcissist lies, not the things that they placed upon you. It's important to remember that your memories do not divine your present or your future. This is a hard one for a lot of people because a lot of times you want to be able to look at the past and the past have it define who you are now, but it doesn't. It only shows you the path that you've walked on so far to get there. And then you decide, do I like that path? Is it working? Is it not working? What do I need to change and develop to become the person that I'm called to be? So we move into this aspect of rewiring your mindset, of helping you understand the story that you believe that leads you down that spot of like, he actually wasn't that bad. It really wasn't that abusive. Maybe I should go back. Maybe I'm just, maybe it was my fault. But we have to look at the facts of what are the facts of the situation. How has this person actually demonstrated this? How do they demonstrate love? How do they demonstrate care? How do they demonstrate respect? How do they demonstrate honesty? How do they demonstrate loyalty? What does this actually look like? And you start to move forward one step at a time, like understanding and getting rid of the lies in your life about the toxic person and starting to develop a focus and a direction for you, for your growth and for your development. Like, this is important for you to start moving forward, and this is not easy to do alone. This is why we bring people into groups and communities to help them actually grow because you realize that you're not doing it on your own. 
some of you right now watching this need to be able to understand that the, you, when you're working right now with a therapist, it's not working. Because even though you're with a therapist, you're still alone. You still don't have someone who actually understands because this person has textbook knowledge, but they're not giving you the healing you actually deserve. They're not actually connecting you with the same level of understanding. Instead, they're giving you mantras. They're telling you to leave. They're telling you, hey, you should be over this by now. They're walking you through all these different things that are not helping you grow, change, and develop. Like they're giving you nifty little things to be able to, to try to implement in your life, but it's not actually changing. You don't feel like you're actually getting the healing. Then you need to change what you're doing. You need to understand there's multiple different ways to heal. It doesn't have to fit in one box, one style. But you have to start developing this aspect of how do you actually work on rewiring your mindset so that you no longer think about the narcissist, so he no longer controls your thoughts, so he no longer takes on free real estate in your mind, and to start moving forward in the healing. Until you make that decision, nothing will change. Until the pain of staying the same becomes so great, you're willing to do a difference. You're willing to make a change. Tony Robbins talks about that of like, hey, like you have to make a change, but until that pain is big enough, you won't make a change. How long do you want to keep remembering, ruminating, and staying trauma bonded to a toxic narcissist, to a toxic person? Do you get to the place where you actually forget the narcissist? There's a piece of people that will never forget to a certain degree. But there is a state where you get to the place where this person no longer triggers you, no longer affects you, no longer has you ruminating, and no longer takes free real estate in your mind. But instead, you're able to grow, change, heal, and develop and move towards the person that you're actually called to be. This is going to take a choice of you focusing on your personal growth and your development. If you want to do that with us at Raw Motivations, you can go to www.rawmotivation.com. Click on the one-on-ones. We'd love to work with you one-on-one. We'd love to help you as you move forward whether that's progression in one of our challenges or whether that's going through the application process to join our Thriver community, whatever it might look like. The next step moving forward is you deciding that you need to make a change because otherwise you'll be stuck in this rumination and in the trauma bond with a toxic person forever. If you haven't already, like and subscribe or share this with someone who's struggling ruminating, that's struggling to think about a narcissist, that's struggling to get free so we can try to provide the tools to help them move forward 